You know, I don't know really how to start this because this is sort of the dark side of mathematics, especially the mathematical community. I don't like talking about discrimination. I certainly don't ever want to imply that the math community discriminates against anybody or anything. But the reality is, it does. And I want to tell you about it now. So it pains me a little bit. But to stay the course, and, and I think we can get by this dark moment. You see, if you look down here, here's a very friendly looking number. The square root of 3 divided by 5. And if a mathematician would see this, you know what? That person would have no trouble with this number. They would just go on their merry way. But the sad fact is that if we just reverse the roles and wrote this, many mathematicians would be very uneasy and would want to change that. Now, why is there so much hatred toward having a square root in the denominator? Why do we discriminate the numerator from the denominator? Well, there are a variety of reasons, and some of them actually maybe are reasonable, as we'll see through the course of the stuff. But, but the reality is, Mathematicians often do not like having a square root down below. On top, fine. Down below, no. So, so how do we alleviate this? How do we actually try to make these closed-minded people happier? Because we want to make everyone happy. Well, the reality is we can get rid of square roots in the denominator. And the way we do that is by remembering that really a square root multiplied by itself is just going to be an unsquare root. So, for example, here... Let's see how we could actually make someone happy that doesn't like a denominator with a square root. Well, all I would do is, first of all, one way to make them happy is just to remove the whole thing. You see, then everyone's happy because there's nothing there. Blank, happy. Okay, but let's suppose that we write it back. If we wrote it back, that would be 5 divided by the square root of 3. Now, there's a great fact in all of life that you should always remember, and that is if you multiply by 1 Nothing happens. It's fantastic. And sometimes doing nothing is more powerful than doing something. In this case, it's very powerful. Because what I'm going to do is I'm going to multiply by 1. Now, I'm not going to, not going to write a 1 there like this. I mean, that would be sort of foolish just to write a 1 there. But what I'm going to do is multiply by a very fancy version of 1, namely some number divided by itself, which is equal to 1. And that number is going to be exactly the square root of 3. So this is not going to change the value of the fraction. It's still numerically equal to 5 divided by the square root of 3. However, now look what happens. Well, on the top I see 5 times the square root of 3. And on the bottom, what do I see? I see the square root of 3 times the square root of 3, which is just 3. So now I see something that equals the original thing of 5 divided by the square root of 3. But notice now that those discriminating people would be reasonably happy because the denominator now no longer has a square root in it. This is often called uh, clearing a denominator for a radical. And the, the method is, if it's something very simple like this, you just multiply top and bottom by 1, and the choice of 1 is pretty straightforward. It's just the square root. For example, let's try another one just to really drive this home. If I have 2 over the square root of 2, and I want to clear the denominator, well, what I do, I'd multiply top and bottom by the same thing, so I'm not going to change anything. The, the, the key, of course, is you don't want to change this number. And what does this equal? Well, this equals 2 divided by the square root of 2. And then what do I see here? I see square root of 2 times square root of 2. That's just 2. Hey, now look at that. These can cancel, and I see the square root of 2. So that's sort of interesting. The square root of 2 is the same thing as 2 divided by the square root of 2. And now you can sort of see, gee, you know, if I had a choice, I have to admit this is a lot nicer and more tidy. I sort of know what that means, whatever it means. I don't know what it means. But if you knew what it means, you knew what it means, rather than this, which is sort of 2 over square root of 2. Who knows? So sometimes, in fact, rash, you know, making the denominator uh, rational, rationalizing the denominator, is not necessarily a bad idea, as you can see here. Okay, these are easy examples. But what about if we had something really sort of painful? For example, what if you showed someone who was not very open-minded, that thing. 3 divided by the square root of 2 plus 1. And you wanted to actually clean that denominator up and have no square root down there. Well, what would you do? Well, you see, a great first guess, a great first guess would be to multiply the top and the bottom by that thing. It worked before. This is a fantastic guess. You know, making guesses is the most important thing you can possibly do in mathematics whether they're right or wrong. If we try this, we're going to see something very unfortunate. When we actually multiply all this bottom stuff out, 
we're going to see we're going to have more square roots there. Let me show you this really, really quickly, and I'm going to go through this in a little slower detail in a moment. But if I were to multiply the bottom out, you see here I would still have 3 times square root of 2 plus 1. But that bottom, well, I've got to actually either use the FOIL method of FOILing everything out, the first times the first, the, the outside terms, the inside terms, and the last terms, or just distribute everything over. But square root of 2 times square root of 2 is 2. The inside terms give me a plus square root of 2. The outside terms give me another plus square root of 2. And the last terms give me a 1. So when I combined all that mess, I see 2 plus 1, which is 3. But unfortunately, I see square root of 2 plus square root of 2, and that's 2 square root of 2. I lost ground, because now I have square roots on top and bottom. Not good. So how do you get around this? Well, you get around this by actually a, a very clever trick, which turns out to have a very pretty solution. And that trick is, when you have something complicated like this, not just a square root alone, but a square root and some other stuff, the trick is to multiply top and bottom, not by that exact thing, but by the exact thing where you switch the sign. Whatever sign this is, make this the opposite. In this case, I'm going to actually multiply top and bottom by square root of 2 minus 1 over square root of 2 minus 1. And this object, first of all, is called the conjugate. See? Conjugate. And the conjugate is just, just what I said. If you have a sum, square root, and something... And the conjugate is the exact same thing with the sign between them reversed. Let's see what happens when we multiply now by the conjugate. So same question. I've got 3 divided by square root of 2 plus 1. But now I'm going to multiply by a different choice of 1. I'm going to multiply by the conjugate. Well, watch what happens. So top and bottom by square root of 2 minus 1. See, the conjugate has the opposite sign. Okay, let's go. So here I see 3 times this. Divided by, and now I've got this thing here, square root of 2 plus 1 times square root of 2 minus 1. Are you happy with what I have here? Well, I hope not, because actually there's something that is not right. And what's not right? You see, if you look at this, just forget everything else in the world, look at this, what do you see? You see... 3 square root of 2 minus 1. But is that what we really want to say? Absolutely not. What we want to say is 3 times this whole thing. So you have to always remember that if you're multiplying 3 by a whole bunch of stuff, you've got to keep those parentheses right in there. This is really a classic mistake. And the idea is you have to always distribute. Always distribute. Okay, so now uh, let's keep going. If I distribute that, that would be 3 square root of 2 minus 3. And now let's actually work out this. Now that's going to require a foiling thing. So remember foil. There are a lot of different ways of thinking about this. Foil is just a little shorthand for thinking. First times first, the outer terms multiply them, the inner terms multiply them, the last terms multiply them, and then add everything together. If you don't like that, you can just think about it as what it really is, which is distributing. Just to take this whole thing and multiply it by this, and then multiply it by that, and then distribute again this way. So, in fact, you get a whole bunch of terms that multiply. So square root of 2 times square root of 2, we know, is 2. Now, the inside terms give me 1 times the square root of 2. So, that's just plus square root of 2. But look what happens to the outside terms. I get a negative 1 times the square root of 2, which is minus the square root of 2. And now you can see the magic of what's happening here. Notice I have a square root of 2, but then a minus square root of 2. They actually annihilate themselves. So This is actually looking promising. And then a 1 times a negative 1 is just a minus 1. So look what happens. These guys kill each other, and I see 3 square root of 2 minus 3, all divided by, and then I have 2 minus 1. And 2 minus 1 is just 1. So I see an answer of 3 square root of 2 minus 3, or if you'd rather, 3 times the square root of 2 minus 1, if you factor it out. Either answer is, of course, great whether you like factoring or not. But you can see the power of this. Just by taking this thing, which looks pretty ugly, I can see it's actually equal to something much nicer. So this thing of rationalizing denominators, not always a crazy idea. Let me try one last, one, one last thing that I want to show you. This is what I'm just going to do for you. I want you to sit back, enjoy it. But it's one of these questions where, at the end of the problem, I want to know if you're happy or if you're sad. So here we go. Here's the problem. I want to multiply this thing to clear the denominator. So what do I do? Well, I multiply top and bottom by the conjugate of the denominator. 
So what I have to do here is multiply the top and bottom by, well, what's the conjugate? Okay, here we go. It's going to be this thing where I change the sign, 1 plus square root of 3. And I have to do the exact same thing on the bottom, otherwise that equal sign will be false. Because the point is, for this thing to be equal, I'm just multiplying by 1, which does nothing. Okay, multiply out the bottom. What do I see? I see a 1... And then the inside term and the outside term cancel, and I'm left with minus square root of 3 times the square root of 3, which is just minus 3. And what do I get on the top? Well, the same thing. I get a 1, terms cancel, and the last term is plus 3. So this looks like 4 over negative 2, which equals negative 2. There you go. Now the question is, are you happy? Well, I hope you're really not happy. Because actually, I made a big mistake. And the big mistake is actually right here. That actually is false. The bottom was fine, but with the top, I'm actually going to have square roots there. The truth is, there was no cancellation. If you sort of enlarge this to show detail, what we'd really see is the following. Let me just pick up this little part. If we do it really carefully, 1 times 1 is 1. And then I have a square root of 3. But see, then I have another square root of 3, and then finally I have a plus 3. So in reality, what I see is a 1 plus 3, which is 4, and a square root of 3 plus a square root of 3, which is 2 square roots of 3. And so the reality is I have 4 plus 2 square root of 3 on top. That's the top. And so the actual answer, actual retail value, would be what? If I pick up the action here, that would equal the top 4 plus 2 square root of 3, all divided by well, what we got before, which was the correct bottom, negative 2. And so we could simplify this a little bit if I factor out the common factor of 2 here and cancel. I think I'd see the following. I would see 2 plus square root of 3 over negative 1, which I could write as just negative 2 plus the square root of 3. Well, I'm done with this problem, and as you can see, my ink is running out, so I better stop talking.